Okay, let's do our warm-ups. Sitting bones toward the floor, feel that pelvis open. Keep those ankles, knees, hips, and shoulders lined up. Core active, so get the ribs toward your spine and up, shoulders back and down. And reach your head toward the ceiling. Take a few moments to focus inward, breathing. Just noticing that inner yoga perspective, keeping that as your focus. And inhaling, arms reaching out at shoulder level. Keep those shoulders down. Hands to your heart, elbows back. Stretch out to the front, shoulders still down. And then bring your hands behind and clasp your fingers. Lift your heart, stretch your head back. Exhale, pivot at your hips, come on over and relax. Spread out your toes, lift your sitting bones, bring your hands toward your head. Getting those shoulders working. Move your neck around, chin around. Get the back of your body just relaxed. And then knees bent just a little bit. Start at the bottom of your spine, winding to the top, and lift your heart. Stretch your head back, shoulders down, and a nice little back bend. Take a few breaths there, just lengthening while you're back bending. And then inhale up, release your arms, and just take a moment feeling what's going on. And again, arms are reaching out, hands to your heart, stretch to the front, and clasp your hands behind the opposite way, other finger outside as you lift and stretch, and then pivot and exhale over. And again, just let that lower body just relax. And then again, slowly wind your way up. And again, a nice back bend through the heart, especially. And inhale up, releasing into now pose. Take a moment, just feel your spine getting more activated. We'll do our side stretch. So arms out, palms toward the ceiling, hands above your shoulders. Go ahead and clasp and bring your arms next to your ears. Shoulders, shoulder blades down, sitting bones toward the floor. Stretch up through the top and lean no twist over to the side. So keep your shoulder back down into your foot, out through the top of your fingers. And then inhale back upright and switch your hands. And again, arms next to your ears, everything straight, lean to the other side. And again, just lengthen on that side. Feel the contraction on the side you're leaning toward. Feel that foot press down as you maximize for your body. And again, inhale to the top and release back to mountain. Feel your spine, your sides, everything working a little bit more. And we'll do our twist. Arms out, palms toward the ceiling, hands above your shoulders, clasp your elbows. Stretch your spine apart and exhale to twist. Breath in and exhale over. And just take a few moments there, breathing and relaxing. Spread your toes out. Take a few breaths. Keep the weight on both feet and stay in your twist as you work your way back up. Heart high, elbows back, looking toward the ceiling, upper body back bend. And breathe. Shoulders down, elbows back, chest high. Inhale, coming up, exhale around to the center and switch your arms around. Shoulder blades down, crown high, and exhale to twist the other way. And another breath in, and then exhaling, come on over. So just relax, tension out, arms next to your ears. And again, keeping the weight even as you come back up, Lift your heart, shoulder blades down, elbows back, and another upper body back bend. Remember, always careful with that lower back. And then inhale to the top, exhale to the center. Bring your arms up and stretch 
pivot forward, keep everything even, arms next to your ears, sitting by as a crown, reaching away from each other. And then just drop into ragdoll, let that lower back stretch. Tuck in your chin. Pull in a little deeper if you want with your hands behind your knees or legs. And relax your arms back down, knees bent, and again, slowly coming up and into mountain pose. Take a moment feeling your body so nicely aligned, centered into your feet. Breathe, spread your toes on your favorite balance foot. Let's do a balance practice. So knee right above your ankle, hip bone right above that kind of pointing toward your second toe with that knee and keep everything lined up. Core active, so ribs toward your spine and up, keeping that spine supported. Sitting bones toward the floor, shoulder blades toward your waist and crown toward the ceiling. Center into that foot, getting really connected across the base of your toes and through the heel. And then bring that other leg up. And remember, try not to cross it over. And hold under or around, or just keep it close to the floor and work your ankle. So circle it both ways, just get it nice and flexible. And then flex and point a few times, straightening things out, and bring your foot back down. Switch to that other side. Same thing, everything lined up, core active, spine stretching open, shoulders relaxing down and sink into that foot. Bring your other foot up, however much this side wants to go, and work your ankle. Remember, just step in and out anytime you need to. And flex some point, and release. Let's do a little pelvic tilt, get those hips a little bit more open. So angle the toes out, knees bent just slightly toward the toes, hands above, you got it, positioning the shoulders over the toes and not pushing those knees too far forward. So right again above the toes area. Sitting bones go back, chest forward, nice back bend. And then exhaling forward bend, just rounding. So go ahead and go through your range of motion. Inhale as you come to the front. Exhale as you sink that rib area back. And just feel the hips and pelvis getting a little bit more warmed up for us today. And then when you're rounded forward, just come on back up and into mountain pose. So I thought we'd do a couple of triangles. So step wide, heels kind of next to the back of your mat evenly, and toes pointing straight ahead. So if you want to be realized in the, in the triangle, the length of your ankle to your hip joint would be the same as the distance between your feet, if that feels comfortable for you, or it can be closer, it's okay. Hips and shoulders, remember, stay facing forward during the triangle and your knees stay straight. Arms out at shoulder level, keep those shoulder blades down and those ribs in, core active, and then turn one foot all the way to the side, but don't move your hips or your shoulders or your arms, and then take that back foot, heel back, toes forward, and get centered into the feet. Remember, those knees need to be going the same direction your toes are. And then we're going to push right at that hip joint, straight to the side. The further you push, the further your hand will go closer to your foot. Palms toward the front, and pivot arms right across from each other. Keep reaching your head way out to the side, Hip stays back. Get those arms reaching away from each other. And remember, this hand that's down does not press into anything. It's just their positioning wherever it goes. Head reaching out, the ribs pulling back, sitting bones toward the opposite direction from your head. Arms, fingertips reaching away. 
Shoulder blades clear, still to the waist. And then hand in the air, leading you back up, arms straight, palms to the floor, feet to the front, star position. Energize it from the heart out and release. So feel a little bit more through that torso, hip, back area, and shoulders. And of course, we balance the body, so we're going the other way. So again, arms up. And keep turning 90 degrees with that first one. Keep those hips facing the front. Heel back, toes forward. Same thing. Keep this back hip pulling back. And then get that indentation. Push to the side. Keep pushing. Get as far as you want to go. Palms to the front. And everything straight as you could. So that arm comes as close toward the foot as it wants to go. Your head keeps reaching to the side. That hip behind you stays back, not leaning forward. And your whole front of your body is nice and open to the front. Take a breath, reach those fingers away, head and hips back and stretching apart. And again, don't forget your knees are both straight. And then pivot up, palms back toward the floor, feet to the front. Star position, stretch it out, keep those shoulders down, ribs in and up, core active, and release. So take a moment there, just feel what's going on through your body. And we're gonna do another version of triangle that opens the heart a little bit more. So if the first version was plenty for you, feel free to stick with it, that's okay. Always personal practice. Arms out. Stretch that star open. Move your feet, heel or toes forward. Heel back, toes forward on the back one. Push, push, push all the way to the side for that indentation. Remember, shoulders are facing the front. Hips are facing the front. Palms to the front as well. And then pivoting, bring one arm there, the other one straight above it. Head reaching to the side, keep this back hip pulling back. Everything nice and open to the front. And then if you like the hip or the chest opening a little bit more, bend your elbow, bring your hand down toward your lower hip and pull your heart back, looking slightly up so your whole body turns, not just your neck, to look up toward the ceiling. If your arms are still out, you can also do that, just looking up toward that hand in the air. So feel your heart a little bit more open and keep those hips back. And then bringing your hand back up if you lowered it. Again, pivot up, palms to the floor, feet to the front, stretch it out from the heart and release. Feel the circulation, notice your body. And yeah, we're gonna balance and do it to the opposite side. Shoulders, shoulder blades stay down, core activated. Hips and shoulders to the front, arms at shoulder level. So from your stop, here's your heart. Reach out through the fingertips, down into the feet, up through the crown. And turn your feet 90 degrees with that foot. Remember this hip just turns, this hip stays facing the front. Heel back, toes forward, still everything facing forward. Spread those toes out nice and supported. Keep the knees strong. Push to the side. Maximize that push as much as you want. Palms forward, everything forward, everything nice and even, and pivot. And again, you can stay in your pivot, or you can open that heart more by bending the elbow, bringing it down toward the lower hip. Keep the shoulder pulling back. We'll rotate hips, ribs, shoulder, a little twist, looking up toward the ceiling if you like that opening. Take a breath, stretch out through your head, pull those hips nice and open and back. Take a few breaths there. And then releasing your arm back up if you brought it down, stretch as you pivot back up. Palms toward the floor, feet forward in your star position, and release all the way 
to now impose. So a little bit more heart opening, a little bit more hip opening as well. And then I thought we'd do another balance practice. So let's do a tree since we've got our hips nice and open. So again, find your favorite balance foot, spread out. So remember the base of the toes are your connection. Get those toes spreading out, but not gripping. Ankle knee, hips lined up with that second toe. So make a little roll in at the top of your thigh to get that alignment so the bones support you really supportively. Core active for that spine support because we want to be nice and supported. And then turn one foot, bringing the heel into the arch and the knee and toes coming straight out. Hips and shoulders still facing the front, just like in triangle. And then we're going to move that heel up, either to above your ankle or to your calf, not your knee, or the inner thigh. And bring your hands to your heart when you're ready. So knee as much pointing straight out and pulling back so those hips stay open as you can. And if you need to step out and get back in, turn your knee to the front before you put it back down so things are lined up. So again, find your position, stabilize. You can also go into a little lotus movement, which kind of stabilizes that hip area a little bit more for a lot of people. Find your position. When you're comfortable there, if you're comfortable there, you can bring your hands up. So either straight up, right above your shoulders, or reaching out a little bit further. Shoulder blades still towards your waist. Sway in the breeze if you need to. And when you're ready to release, hands back to your heart, knee to the front, foot to the floor, and relax into mountain pose. Take a moment as you get back into your mountain pose to figure out what needs to stabilize on the other side. So again, get that alignment first, get that core connected, sitting bones and shoulder blades down, ribs in, crown to the ceiling, and stabilize with those toes spread apart. Find your position and open the hip going to the opposite side. So both hips stay there, shoulders face front as well. Knee out to the side with those toes. And again, if your balance challenge today like I am, keep that foot low or bring it up a little bit or more or into the lotus. It's up to you. And again, find your position and stabilize as much as your body needs today. Keep breathing, keep relaxing, keep sinking into that foot. And again, if you're stable and willing, you can bring your arms up and reach to the sky and the sky. Sway in the breeze. Remember, balance isn't perfect in most days. Take a moment and breathe. Keep those shoulder blades down, shoulders away from your ears. And again, bringing your hands to your heart and your knee to the front, step out and into mountain pose. Breathe and relax, sink down and feel that stability. Hands to your heart, we'll look at your hands and bring them up. Swan dive forward, arms reaching out, chest bleeding and drop into ragdoll. Hands up on your shins under your knees, stretch and straighten your back. Chin still tucked in a little bit. Remember, you want to keep stretching that back of your neck. Exhale back down, hands together, knees slightly bent, inhaling. Hands to your heart, keep following them all the way up. A nice back bend, lifting your heart, looking at your thumbs. And again, exhaling and coming all the way over. And this time down to the mat, into child's pose, transitioning to the floor. Hips to your heels, hands, palms up, forehead toward the floor. Get those knees together for a good low back stretch. 
or spread them apart if you want to breathe more easily. Take a moment there, just breathing. Exhale, the tension. And then inhale, sitting up, and let's come into staff position. So sitting bones a little behind you, get that support if you need it behind you. And press out through the bottoms of your feet, toes pulling back, knees straight up toward the ceiling, everything nice and lined up with those hips. Shoulders back and down, core still activated, supporting your spine, crown reaching toward the ceiling. And let's just do our regular hip warm up since we've been using the hips a bit and let that knee come down. So one foot up to the opposite thigh, knee coming out, down toward the floor, knee and toes up on that leg that's at the front. Remember, you can shift it to the side if you need a little bit easier pelvic opening so that those knees will come further toward the floor. Stretch up through the crown, keep that core supporting your spine, keep those shoulders relaxing down and back, and let that knee come down. Weight of your hand on it if you'd like a little extra to get that knee moving toward the floor or not. It's always your choice, but don't push. Pushing just tenses and tightens the muscles and we don't want to do that. And then bringing your foot up, holding on or wrapping around and moving it back and forth for that hip rotator. And as that warms up a little bit and you love it, move your foot higher or closer and make it more intense or don't. It doesn't really matter. It's your personal practice. And then release that leg. Feel the difference. Remember, noticing what's going on with your body is your yoga perspective. So make sure you're paying attention. And we're going to work the other side to even things out. So bring that other foot up. Notice that one side may be tighter than the other. That's not unusual because creatures of habit, we use our bodies habitually. And usually we're getting in and out of cars and chairs and things from the same direction, which of course uses our muscles differently on both sides. So don't be surprised if one side ends up different from the other. Again, letting that knee come down, moving that leg over if that helps, or adding a little weight with your hand if you want it going even further with just a little weight, not pressure. Take a moment. Now remember, breathe and relax. When you relax, that's when it opens a little bit more. So let it happen. Don't force anything. And again, after it feels like, oh yeah, that's warmed up a little bit, bring that foot up, work it back and forth. Hold it however feels comfortable for you. But remember, keep those shoulders down, that core still supporting your spine, and the crown reaching toward the ceiling. And again, feel the outside of the hip, that rotator. Make sure it feels okay. If you love it and you want it more, higher or closer or both, or not. Personal practice is the most important thing. And then releasing, bring that leg out again into stacked position. Make sure those hip bones, sitting bones are back. The pivot is right at the top of your thigh. Your body is nicely supported straight up. We're going to bring the legs out to the sides. So lift up, push those sitting bones maybe a little bit further back, push out through the bottoms of your feet. Bring your hands to your sides, arms out at shoulder level, palms toward the ceiling, shoulders staying down. And then again, hands above your shoulders, still shoulder blades towards your waist, or active and supporting your spine. Hands to your shoulders, sink down into the sitting bones. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale and sink. Inhale and stretch. And exhale and turn to one side. Inhale and stretch. And exhale and reach for your foot. So you may reach your leg or your toes 
or beyond. It's just your body. Again, whatever is right for you. Chest and chin toward your knee. Top of the head toward your toes. Toes pulling back. And then we're going into a little twist. So bring the same arm into that inner knee and hold on to your leg or ankle. And bring the other arm out to the side, looking at it. And bring that hand up and reach it toward your toes. So your whole body is facing forward. And if you like a little more twist, you can look under your arm up toward the ceiling. So you're turning your hip back, your ribs also pulling more open and your shoulders slightly back so that you can get your head looking up. So you're not just turning your neck that way. Take a breath, just relax. This back hip can be a little bit up so that you facilitate that twist if you love it. And then bringing the hand up, lead with it back, sitting back up, stretch it out, and release your arms. Sink into those sitting bones a little bit more, push out through your toes, and of course, we're gonna twist to the other side. So once more, shoulders are down, bringing your arms at shoulder level, and palms toward the ceiling, hands right above your shoulders. Exhale, sink way down, hands to your shoulders, and then inhale, stretch it. And again, exhale, sink down. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, and twist. Face that opposite foot. Inhale, and stretch. Exhale, and pivot. Reach for that foot. Chin and chest toward your knee. Press that through both feet, knees up toward the ceiling, sitting bones pushing back, and reach for your head and toes together. And that same elbow coming inside the knee, holding onto your ankle or your foot, and bring that other arm out to the side. Look at it, bring it up, and reach overhead, arm next to your ear, reaching toward your toes. So it may not get to your toes, that's okay. Just sink into your position as much as you'd like. Feel those little ribs stretching apart. If you love the twist, reach your forehead and face forward, head toward your toes, and then hips, ribs, and shoulder rotate so you can look under your arm up toward the ceiling a little bit more. So remember, only as far as your body wants to go, if you're super flexible, you can be looking way up toward the ceiling. Or if you're not, you can just look slightly to the front. And then bringing that hand back up, let it pivot you back into your seated position with your arms extended. Release your arms. Bend your knees slightly. Bring them in and back into staff position. Feel your core, and we're going to go ahead and roll slowly onto the floor. As you get all the way down, just a little reclined integration there, and relax. Deep breath. Exhale, any tension. So corpse position for our relaxation, just press your back down a little bit more. Sitting bones toward your heels, hands, palms up so the shoulders release down into that surface beneath you. And then just relax, spine in its normal position. Feel you know, that back of your head on the floor, just move around, getting that chest and chin releasing a little bit more. Take a few breaths there, just let your body grow heavy, sinking into that surface beneath you. So we opened a lot through the heart and chest today. So let that heart stay open, shoulders sinking down. Hips were open a lot also. So again, just let that lower body relax. Everything just breathing deep. Letting your body grow heavier each moment. Sinking deep into that connection beneath you and into the earth. Let your body go. 
breathing fully, letting your belly move as that diaphragm expands your lungs and sinking back. Exhale and tension. As your body relaxes, just release any thoughts of your body from your mind. Let Mother Earth support you. Let it go. As your body relaxes further and your mind drifts away, know that other thoughts will come to your mind as you release thoughts of your body. It's always the job of your mind to produce thoughts. It's your choice whether you pay attention. Just allow those thoughts to drift away as easily as your breath. Thoughts flowing in, thoughts flowing out. No need to pay attention to the content. No need to think of the past or anticipate the future. Just let the thoughts drift in and out as easily as your breath. As you breathe deeply and your body relaxes more freely, just allow those thoughts to disappear and allow your awareness to release both your body and your mind. Focus your awareness inward. Find that point of peace within. Fill your body with that peace. Fill your mind with the peace. And just take a few moments being peace. And if you can keep relaxing longer today, feel free to relax as long as you have time and opportunity. It's time to reactivate for the rest of your day. Just begin drawing energy and awareness with the breath back to the body. As you breathe more deeply, just begin moving your body gently, however feels really good for you today. And when you're ready for your final yoga hug of appreciation, Back pressing down, draw your heels up towards your hips and your, hip, your knees up towards your heart. Wrap your arms around, give yourself a good appreciative yoga hug. Let your body know you appreciate its yoga work today and the work your body does for you every day. And when you're ready to release, feet to the floor, roll over to the side and sit back up, getting ready whatever's ahead for you today. Thanks for joining.